WrestleMania has eaten itself in recent years. Once a studio album in which a breakthrough new star represented the breakout hit single, Mania in the stadium era more resembles a greatest hits compilation. WWE simply plays the same old songs, but since this era gave us the best of The Undertaker's streak and confirmed with a bullet Shawn Michaels' status as Mr. WrestleMania, perhaps best of is the more fitting metaphor. There was a reason behind the part-time era, the part-timers were playing better. WrestleMania 33 raised those stakes in becoming an overlong mixtape, borderline unlistenable in one sitting. It was exhausting. The rumoured outlook for Mania 34, however, is encouraging. Just one of the muted mega matches warrants the standard epic length, and it's one to truly anticipate. Triple H is pegged for a match that surely cannot reach his trademark 100 years war. Most reassuringly of all, we might luck into an actual undercard, as opposed to an overstuffed one. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 signs that point towards WWE WrestleMania 34 for being awesome. Number 10, the location. Drawing on the personal experience of WhatCulture.com's Michael Sidwick, New Orleans is the perfect host city for WrestleMania. Pop-up jazz bands provide a 24-7 soundtrack. There are more music and dive bars than there are people. The French Quarter is a small buzzing hub, only a drunken stumble for most hotels. And the venue itself, the New Orleans Superdome, exists right on the lip of activity. There's no need to arrange transportation. You only have to collapse from one bar and you fall straight into your seat. The venue itself is similarly conducive to a bloody good time. Often the open air environment breeds nightmare tales of oppressive weather and obstructive views. Everybody though in the Superdome is guaranteed a decent seat at the very least, and the roof allows that enthusiasm to reverberate loudly around those gigantic walls. The Superdome provides the infectious atmosphere of an arena and the spectacular vista of a stadium, the perfect match. The show would have to threaten disaster to quiet a drunken crowd, and happily, number nine, Braun avoids a bigger monster. The events of Survivor Series 27 threatened a meeting between Braun Strowman and Triple H. The game usually situates himself in programs with performers who have generated the most buzz. Strowman was tailor-made for that this year, but Triple H is incompatible with the monster among men who excels as a rapid, unstoppable force of nature. Trips would have to stop and methodically work him over. However, the signature of Ronda Rousey has seemingly cast a shadow over that foreshadowing. Recent rumors indicate that Strowman is set for a program opposite The Miz, and that should provide a much-needed brevity on a show that's probably going to be about six hours long. The prospect of The Miz selling fear and doing everything in his imagination to avoid a kicking is the stuff of which great sports entertainment is made. And then he can vanish, and the sight of Miz on a milk carton is going to be far more palatable than Triple H milking Braun Strowman. I don't mean that literally, I just mean for a lot of that match Triple H would have been in control, and we don't want to see that. Number 8, Past President. WWE tends to present non-wrestler celebrity matches very well indeed. Bono being the exception. Lawrence Taylor accounted for himself very well at WrestleMania 11 in a match so professionally laid out that it compensated for the fact he was an amateur. Even better than this was the match between The Big Show and Floyd Mayweather at WrestleMania 24, in which money was framed hilariously and realistically as a cocky ant before the giant made him squeal by standing on his puffed out chest. Clearly WWE were meticulously struck to the match with the perfectionist drive of Randy Savage planning to hide Miss Elizabeth in a backstage closet. There is no chance in hell that WWE botches its major investment, nor will it embarrass the billion dollar princess. To use another Vince McMahonism, it's more or less a guarantee that WWE will do everything it can to ensure Rousey's big match winning moment feels as big as it's meant to feel. And we'll all talk about it and probably moan online. Number seven, an actual undercard. The injury to Dean Ambrose was inevitable, really. The man withstood the WWE grind for years, wrestling more matches than any of his peers. And WWE once wrote him off for being lazy. Can't make that stuff up. You also can't book Ambrose to belatedly avenge Seth Rollins' 2014 treachery on the grandest stage, which is why, as it's rumored, WWE is heading towards a collision between Rollins and his makeshift partner, Jason Jordan, maybe. He's got a bad neck now. On paper, that's not something you're gonna get overly excited about, but a wrestling card needs ebb and flow to sustain interest throughout. If everything is framed as amazing, then nothing becomes amazing. Even Michael Bay dispenses with the explosions to build interest ahead of the next one. Jason Jordan versus Seth Rollins is a fine addition to the card. There is scope also to do something memorable with it. Even an idea as simple as Jordan entering the Superdome in full Kurt Angle attire, to really underscore his delusional shtick, would add to that whole, this is WrestleMania. It's not just Raw, they're usually the best things about it. Number six, they're actually pushing Oscar. Oscar was amazing in 2018's Royal Rumble match. Whether cracking Sasha Banks in the face or mercilessly taunting Ember Moon's arm injury, the Empress extended that she is truly among the world's elite, irrespective of gender. 
everyone knows this already. But which opponent awaits Oscar in New Orleans? WWE has already done the Alexa Bliss match, which is a shame, because Alexa, having mastered her character and proven herself in the past, is capable of delivering this good match that everyone says she can't. Trust me, she can, and she deserves a good send-off as Raw Women's Champion. And while there's also Mickie James, Nia Jax, Bailey, and Alicia Fox, none of those really feel remotely worthy of WrestleMania. And yeah, WWE also burned through Oscar versus Sasha Banks on a recent episode of Raw, but doing that again is another proposition, and the chemistry is obviously evident. If Banks goes full heel, the prospect, in terms of body language alone, is alluring. So there are options on the table, and usually options equal good results. Number five, the recent peace treaty. In the late summer of 2017, WWE challenged the thinning patience of its core audience by continuing unabated with the pan Jinder Mahal push. The abject reaction to the build match between Mahal and Brock Lesnar finally compelled WWE to see the obvious. Jinder, as WWE champion, just wasn't working. He soon dropped the title he should never have been in contention for to AJ Styles, and that yielded both a Survivor Series dream match and the fact that AJ Styles was champion again. And then at this year's Raw Rumble pay-per-view, Shinsuke Nakamura triumphed in what was a very, very smart creative decision. The olive branch extended, Vince McMahon has acknowledged that he cannot do as he, and he alone pleases. For now. The post-WrestleMania season creates scope for further experimentation, so who knows what's going to happen there. But before the showcase of the Immortals, McMahon is servicing both the mainstream curious and the in for it for life crowd, promising a show that will be for everybody and for all ages. Damn it, that's what it's all about. Number four, further scope for opportunity. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, AJ Styles versus Nakamura, The Undertaker versus John Cena, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey and a mystery partner. Right there are four matches with which WWE reportedly intends to sell at this year's WrestleMania. Of those four, only the WWE Championship match is certain of approaching the half-hour epic that has come to define WrestleMania in its sapping stadium era, in turn creating scope for the mid-card roster to finally do something more than make up the numbers in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Gauging by the performers WWE has pushed in January too, Finn Balor is well positioned to wrestle a match of some importance in New Orleans following a great Iron Man stint in the recent Raw Rumble. The company is also clearly behind Samoa Joe, who is as good an opponent as any. Over on SmackDown, Bobby Roode is bereft of real challenges to his United States title, which may result in the Usos finally receiving their due credit on the show of shows. And they do have some kind of fuss with the Bludgeon Brothers at the moment as well. So I'll have to wait and see. Number three, never too late. WWE really should have promoted the John Cena vs. Undertaker match at the peak of their respective physical and storyline powers. Nobody truly bought CM Punk as a legit contender, but the realized dream match aura of the wider storyline allowed fans to gladly suspend disbelief. Take a guaranteed a win, but in doing so, you also guaranteed a match of the year contender. In contrast, John Cena provoked the ire of the fandom at the peak nadir of the Super Cena era. You remember the meme? Cena wins, lol. He dominated all comers, even proper main event stars, and sent them back to the mid-card. And the sheer anxiety between seeing Cena go against Taker would have guaranteed an unprecedented atmosphere for the ages. Still, seeing these two go at it in 2018 is less incongruous than it may seem. As good as Taker looked on Raw 25, there's little chance of this exceeding half hour in length, a necessary and welcome prospect, given the endurance test Mania has become. Expectations are minute for the match too, which should stave off disappointment. And realistically, both performers are so legendary that they will get the atmosphere you're supposed to get at WrestleMania, even when they're just staring down at each other. And we miss those moments, I'd like more of those. Number two, fascinating at the very least. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 30 one delivered everything except its predictable poison promise. Lesnar in 2015 was very much the beast he was marketed as, having killed off John Cena at SummerSlam 2014 and wrestled the best WWE match in ages at the Royal Rumble. From here, Lesnar obliterated Reigns in a match of palpable danger as Roman just sat around with a wry smile on his face. He refused to give Lesnar any pleasure from this sadistic onslaught and he had the body language of a masochist. Now, the outcome is not in doubt, but nor is the quality of the match. Besides which, even if Lesnar and Reigns contrive to disappoint on the night, there is zero chance of anyone forgetting about it. It's both a fight few apparently want to see and the match absolutely nobody will be able to prize their eyes away from, which should in many ways highlight the extent to which Reigns is actually a superstar. Number one, a phenomenal WWE title. WWE Champion AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura is a tantalizing proposition. The two men are well versed in crafting a classic, and their famous NJPW Wrestle Kingdom 10 encounter earned rave reviews for its electric fusion of smart psychology and just punching people really hard in the face. Moved across to a WWE ring, the combination cannot replicate this stiff intensity, but on Sunday's form, Nakamura can still connect with a new fan base 
even if he's no longer allowed to just, you know, boot people in the head. For example, what is often overlooked is Nakamura's Super NXT series with Bobby Roode. He is capable of deviating from his strong style, and in New Orleans, pushed with the necessary conviction, he'll surely prove that. And he'll have to, realistically, unless WWE wants to turn him heel. Either way, the company has to promote this as a dream match, conditioning the universe to expect just that. Nakamura responded to the challenge of growing New Japan Pro Wrestling by evolving into a persona as unique as it was successful, so let's just do the same here. Although with that said, wrestling a great match opposite a great opponent on a great stage is ridiculously straightforward in comparison, and therefore, this should be a match for the ages. <laughs> well, that was great, I agree. You can subscribe down here, check out some more of our videos over here, or check out some of our other channels right here. Thank you.